my friend. I see you followed your nose to this lovely uh, perfumery, perfume yard, perfactory? Yes, let's go with perfactory. A word of advice from a former perfume peddler. Never start your sales pitch with, you smell like you could use some perfume. It has a surprisingly low success rate. This sensuous little island is where perfume was produced. Your nostrils are in for a treat, unless you're allergic, in which case I could sell you a wonderful remedy for a very reasonable price. No? Okay then. I'll check in on you at the end of your visit. See you soon, my friend. Headed to the house of Odysseus on a tiny boat. Let's try not to place Poseidon off, shall we? Perfume-making techniques were invented and perfected in Mesopotamia and Egypt, beginning in the 4th millennium BCE. By the time of the Mycenaean era, perfume played an important role in the Greek economy. Mostly reserved for kings, priests, and aristocrats in the beginning, it later became more widely available during the classical and Hellenistic periods. Greeks used perfume for more than just personal cosmetics. It also had sacred uses. For example, cults would sometimes anoint their god's statue with perfume, and it was also used during rituals like weddings and funerals. Food and wine could also be scented with perfume to add to a meal's presentation. The art of making perfume was part of medicine and pharmacology, and physicians devoted entire books listing the best perfume recipes. Perfume is made up of two main components. A greasy substance, called an excipient, like vegetable oil or animal fat, and an odorous substance, such as flowers and plants. For ancient Greeks, the most common excipient was olive oil. According to Theophrastus, however, the most valuable oils were those extracted from nuts in the Syrian and Egyptian deserts. The odorous ingredient could be taken from a variety of sources. These include flowers like roses or lilies, herbs like oregano, spices like saffron, resins like amber, and leaves from plants. Some fragrances were also imported from outside of Greece, like Indian cinnamon and Syrian frankincense. These exotic scents were considered exceptionally precious. Mixing scent into the fatty excipient was called enfleurage, of which there were two methods. If the flower being used for the scent was fragile, the preferred method of extraction was cold enfleurage, which required an oil-soaked cloth. First, the cloth was rubbed against the flower's petals, saturating the oil with the scent. Then, the cloth was pressed to wring out the scented oil. Hot enfleurage involved heating the excipient before mixing in the scented substance. The hot enfleurage process consisted of heating and distillation. After the scented ingredients were dipped into heated oil, the mixture was then filtered before being pressed and decanted. Once the mixture was complete, spices, coloring agents and fixatives were added along with preservatives to prevent the perfume from spoiling. Finally, the liquid was hermetically sealed in bottles, ready to be shipped to market. <laughs> perfume was usually bottled in ceramic or glass flasks, but more luxurious fragrances were contained in ornamented and painted flasks. Lekethoi and Alabastra were elegant bottles designed for women, while Arabaloi were used by athletes. It was common for the bottle's craftsmen to brand them to prevent frauds and knockoffs. Perfume shops were usually located in city centers, befitting of their importance. 
In addition to selling perfume, they were also sometimes used as meeting places. For example, the perfume shops near Athens's Agora were frequented every morning by the city's youth. The main purpose of perfume was to attract members of both the opposite and the same sex. We can trace this practice back to a scene in the Iliad, where Hera used perfume to seduce Zeus. Similarly, hymns about goddesses like Demeter and Aphrodite always mention their pleasant smell, further solidifying the belief that scent and seduction went hand in hand. However, perfume was also a mark of social status. Athletes covered themselves in perfumed oils during their training and at symposia, and citizens were judged based on how anointed, shiny, and perfumed their bodies were. Cassandra? Good news, I hope. Safe and sound. Well done. And now the shroud is yours. You don't want it? After all that? I gained something more valuable today. For your troubles, Miss Theos. If I knew any better, I'd think you were testing me. Perhaps. You did well, Miss Theos. Tell me, how do you feel about killing a general in Megaris? Do this for me and earn double what you earned today. Are you up to the task? It would take you far away from Kefalonia. So far away you might never return. Generals bleed like anyone else. Good. What do you say? Who is this general? They call him the Wolf. He do something to offend you? Yes, he's costing me Drachmi. He's not good for business. Anything I should know about Megaris? Only that it's the most valuable land in the Greek world. From a military perspective, of course. Unfortunately for Megarians, it has two very powerful neighbors who just can't seem to play nice. In the tug of war between Corinth and Athens, Megaris is their own. I accept. Splendid. You need a boat. You have one, don't you? If I had a boat, we wouldn't be having this conversation. A shame. It's too far of a swim, I'm afraid. Even for you. I'll find one. Good. I hope it's sturdy. And why is that? The seas are much more dangerous, I'm afraid. War is coming, and the wolf is on the wrong side. War? With who? The entire Greek world is at each other's throats. What rock have you been hiding under exactly? Kefalonia. And how do I know you're on the right side? Because I'm the one paying you. You won't be disappointed. When your job in Megaris is done, come find me at Pilgrim's Landing in Fokis. Hmm. I need a boat. I should go see the shipbuilder. It's a fine ship, Telimenes. Cassandra! She is that. Ready to ride the waves for the right captain and the right price. I really need a boat, Telumenes. Everyone at Kafalonia needs a boat. Or passage on one. You've seen this shit hole. All my life. Even if I had a boat, who's going to row it? You! <laughs> I'd give my left grave to see that! This is Kefalonia. I could always find someone down on their luck and willing to work for next to nothing to get off this island. The seas are treacherous now. Well, more than usual. It would be suicide. You're not being very helpful, Telimenes. Not sure if this helps, but rumor has it the Cyclops is coming for you and Marcos. 
Malaka. How is that helpful? That monster's held Kefalonia captive for too long. I figure if anyone could finally rid us of his tents, it would be you. Telimenes? What does this have to do with my need for a boat? Rumor also has it the Cyclops has docked his ship in Kleptus Bay. His ship, you say? I'll have to pay Kleptus Bay a visit. Be careful. That one-eyed brute has a nasty temper. I can take his ship and deal with the Cyclops at the same time. Two birds, one stone. That's my witness. I swear! Which one? What difference does it make? <laughs> all of them! I swear! All of them! I have never heard so much fucking god talk from one man in all my days! <gasps> Let him go! No one on this island is allowed to say that word! Did he say Cyclops? Did he hurt your feelings? Don't like it when people call me that! Um, oh, I didn't. I, oh. But you're so fat. I mean, big and strong. And you really do only have one eye. Oh, my eye. Give it to me. Give it to me and I won't kill Marcos for having you steal it! Give it to me! You want it? Ah! 
Ah, Mistios, you must help me. Must I? If you know what's good for you and your pair should take pause. I'm listening. I'm an exile from Athens. Though by looking at me, I'm sure that's impossible to believe. A successful exile, at least. We should offer enough to keep me interested. You have a good eye. What's the problem? It's my brother Ornios. He's been captured by bandits. We were attacked when our ship landed. They must have smelled our wealth from across the water. I managed to escape, but he's stuck in a cage on a dock like a beast. And you want me to rescue him? Bring him to me with not a hair on his head disturbed and I'll pay you well. I'll rescue your brother. For a price. Yes, yes, of course. Drachmi is the only language you Kefalonians understand. I'm not Kefalonian. one rescuing you. And if it wasn't for your brother's money, I'd gladly feed you to the pigs. Now, let's go. Stay close and shut up. Again. I don't know where you find this raffian, brother, but they do get the job done. This is touching, but you owe me Rahmi. You proved yourself useful. Get yourself something nice. of an excipient. Yes, olive oil makes a great excipient. And dressing, and medicine. Honestly, we pour that stuff on everything, including ourselves. And question two, what is anflorage? Anflourage involved mixing the perfume scent into an excipient. We're almost done. Just one more question. In the Iliad, which goddess used perfume to seduce Zeus? A fair guess, but in this case, an incorrect one. Try another answer. Yes, Ira poured a saucy scent on herself to get her husband's attention. You did it! You've completed the test! If you say so, but I have a feeling we'll run into each other again soon! Farewell! 